Here, a short overview. Uh, yeah, a lot of people make a big fuss about the dangerous animals in, in Australia, sharks, but right. yeah, yeah, sharks and crocodiles in the north, and we got sn snakes and spiders and yeah, anything that's anything that's poisonous, we sort of have. Yeah, well, there's a there's a couple of classics that, that probably a lot of people will be aware of, like the Great Barrier Reef. We've got the the Great Ocean Road in in Victoria. Yeah, Ayers Rock is another another classic. Stereotypical would be the the surfer type with with long hair, and even if you you're not surfing, I, there's a still a surf, surf culture. Welcome, listeners, to the podcast Communicate with the World, sponsored by Europe Direct. Don't believe tourists. We ask the locals. Global Communicator, the podcast. Hi, Matt. Hi, Marco. Welcome to the podcast Global Communicator. I'm really happy to have an Australian here and sitting in Austria and speaking about your home country. Mm -hmm. Especially for me, it's something special because as an Austrian, you get often... The problems, if you tell someone from where you are, the complication between Austria and Australian, the name similarities, we have them everywhere. So one of our sayings are, we don't have kangaroos. Mm -hmm. So, but we are not just going to speak about kangaroos, we are going to speak about many more details. Yeah, okay, so um, I'm an Australian, obviously. I uh, grew up in Melbourne and then uh, moved to the country when I was uh, maybe around 12 or 13. I went to school there and uh, moved back then for my studies to Melbourne. And that's where I met my now wife. You're actually a perfect role model for our podcast because you're born and raised in Australia, lived there nearly more than 25 years, let's mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. yep. And now you're in Austria, so it's going to be a perfect comparison between the countries and you can give all our listeners a great input about Australia. Yeah, Australia, I love, love Australia, of course. Um, my biased opinion, it's <laughs> the best country in the world. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, great living quality. Uh, it's massive, of course, as we know. Um, I, I know best my state, home state of Victoria, but I've been sort of different places as well. Uh, still a lot of places I'd like to see in Australia. I have seen plenty and yeah, love Australia. I love, love the people, love the, the climate most of the time anyway. <laughs> We spoke about um, that you love Australia and that it's huge, you said already. Mm -hmm. So country, yeah. it's the biggest, biggest country, as I found out in my preparation That's in right. advance. But they're just living 25 million. So mm -hmm. the most population is in the east side, right? Yeah. Or That's right, Australia. yeah. The east coast of Australia is most densely populated. And uh, the closer you go to the coast, the more populated it gets. And the further inland you go, the less populated it becomes. Yeah, I guess I grew up in a place that was sort of more more country, um, and you still got your bigger sort of cities in between too, but yeah, certainly uh, the population centered around the bigger cities and, and coastline in any case. If we as a European think about Australia, we have obviously surf spots in our heads, surf mm. guys. Yeah. Well, we know a few cities like Sydney, Melbourne, but actually Canberra is the capital, right? That's right, yeah, yeah. Not, not a lot of people know that, but uh, you've done your research, which is good. And yeah, Canberra is our, our capital where the Parliament House is also based. Doesn't see as much tourism, but it's a nice little town if you do get the chance to, to get there. But it's not a must-see, right? It's yeah. probably not the, yeah, the big sort of oh, among, the, among the top 10, but... Um, if you're uh, close by, then pass yeah. by, but don't take a special journey just to go to Canberra. Yeah, Canada, yeah, right? it's a bit out of... It's not really on the way, so it's yeah. sort of... Uh, sitting out of the way, you have, yeah, have to make a bit of a special effort to get there. And uh, if you're not there for a very long time, it may be worth uh, checking out other areas before you get to Canberra. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> nothing against Canberra. <laughs> yeah, but then we stick with the big cities. Well, mm. so we already mentioned Sydney. You told us that you're from Victoria. So Victoria, there is Melbourne, mm -hmm. very famous city. So give us a small overview about these cities. In that once you told me already, Melbourne is the city with the best vibe yeah. and Sydney is yeah. the city with the best tourism, right? Yeah, it's, it's certainly the most beautiful uh, city, Sydney, probably one of the more beautiful cities uh, worldwide, I, I'd imagine. Um, so great to have a look at. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, my opinion and, and sometimes generally speaking is not always uh, so great to live there, but 
then again, uh, it's a bit of a taste thing. So um, uh, I sort of find uh, living in Melbourne really, really good, uh, a good good vibe, like you said, and, and uh, a good sort of culture and, and character. But I love to get to Sydney when, when I get the chance. And um, and there's, a, you know, like, like you said, there's also other cities. So Adelaide's a really pretty, really smaller city, but still quite big, I guess, for, for yeah, uh, Austrian standards and um, and really nice. And uh, Brisbane's uh, another lovely city, actually, with a nice river running through it. So, um, yeah, there's no no shortage of nice cities in, in, um, in Australia, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, but let's get more to, into Melbourne because mm, it's... Okay. You, you already told me in advance it's famous for their coffee scene, right? Yeah, yeah, it's got a really good established coffee coffee scene and, and cafe scene, I guess, uh, where you can sort of, um, there's a whole plethora of a whole range of um, cafes to choose from and, and, you know, the next one better than the one before and it's sort of a really uh, good good quality food and, and, and good quality coffee and a really nice sort of, uh, sort of vibe and... and, and um, yeah, nice coffee culture there, I guess, and cafe culture where you can sort of get uh, really yeah, delicious and interesting uh, brunches and, and um, yeah, I s sort of uh, what I really miss, I guess, when I'm here. Um, although there is in Linz um, a, a cafe uh, which was inspired by uh, the Melbourne cafe scene um, and it's called uh, Little Dancer that's in, in the city in Linz. And, um, uh, that's the place uh, I find that reminds me uh, most of home. Um, uh, so yeah, if you do get a chance, you can check that out as well. <laughs> a little, <laughs> little taste of home for me anyway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, but we all know um, the stereotypes about Australia, which you already spoke, like surfing guys and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. so on. But there are many more activities to do. But obviously, you also are a guy which was a stereotype, right? Yeah, that's yeah. true, yeah. yeah so yeah. when uh, when I met my, first met my now wife, uh, uh, we, when we first met actually, uh, she was, uh, she saw my long hair and, and knew I was Australian and thought immediately that I was, you know, she assumed that I was a good surfer and was pretty disappointed when she found out I, <laughs> you know, wasn't very good at all on a surfboard. Um, but yeah, thankfully we got we got over that point, and uh, she <laughs> she sort of forgave me for not being Happy a good server. To hear that. Yeah, exactly. So we're going strong now. But uh, um, yeah, I guess uh, the stereotypical would be the the surfer type with with long hair. And even if you you're not surfing, I, there's a still a certain surf culture uh, uh, and, and beach culture in Australia too. So even if you're not searching the beach. Uh, surfing the beach plays a pretty important role uh, in a lot of people's uh, lives, and uh, yeah. A lot of a lot of Australians spend a lot of time there and, and enjoy. Yeah, even even if not at the beach, but but sort of swimming in general is is pretty a good way to cool off, of course, in summer when it's really forty degrees. <laughs> but anyway, Australia is a very sportive city, right? Yeah. You just well, congrats to <laughs> the achievement for the women football team. You just had an amazing football championship, women championship in Australia and in New Zealand, and. Uh, the Matildas, right? Yeah, the Matildas. Yeah, the yeah. Matildas is yeah. the name of the Australian football team. That's right. Yeah, Women yeah. football team made a great job and yeah. even reached a half final. Absolutely. Congrats to that. Yeah, yeah. But there are many more sports, exactly specific sports for Australia, right? Yeah, sure. They sure are. Yeah, uh, very sporty, sporty nation, like you said. And yeah, good on the Matildas. A massive, massive effort to, to make it so far and uh, had a really good team going in and, and, and yeah, prove they can match it with the best. So really looking forward to the tournament next year and the hype around it has been really exciting. So uh, I think uh, everyone really got on board and, and really celebrated, uh, got, got behind the Matildas and celebrated the, the wins and probably the losses too. And yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think the, the television ratings were were uh, off the charts, so it was the highest ratings for, for the last 20 years or something, so uh, really proud of the Matildas. But yeah, we got, uh, you know, uh, especially Melbourne is sort of the, known as the, uh, sort of the main city for, for sporting events. We got also the Australian Open and a uh, uh, golfing major and uh, uh, Formula One as well. And, um, All very famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, in Victoria, more broadly, but uh, also around Melbourne, there's a uh, uh, big. It's a big sort of uh, footy, um, footy state, and uh, footy is our uh, footy is our national game. I guess it's played only uh, in Australia professionally, and it's a sort of weird mix out of a bunch of different sports, and it's it's very hard to understand, but fun to watch.
first of all, the game Lawn Balls uh, is probably not familiar to that many people. Um, uh, it's sort of a game that was, well, maybe earlier had a bit of a reputation that it was reserved for, for oldies and, and, and retirees to, to play, but um, it's kind of like a bocce um, that, that people might know, but instead of throwing the ball, you roll it underarm and it's weighted so it'll uh, drift according, yeah, according to how you hold it and, and a lot of other, I think, intricacies that I'm not aware of. But uh, yeah, and the, the aim is to get it close to the jack, so the white ball. A great day out on a, on a sort of warm day where it's not raining is you get a group of uh, friends or, or family together and you can do barefoot bowls. Uh, a lot of bowls clubs um, all over the all over the city and all over the, the neighbourhoods will offer uh, barefoot bowls. Um, and yeah, you whip the shoes off and, and get, you know, feel the grass under the feet and, um, and can enjoy uh, cheap drinks from the bar and, uh, and a really just a good time, uh, a good sort of atmosphere and a good way to, to spend half a day. For example, for a, a box party or something like that, sometimes. Yeah, and you get cheaper well. prices there, right? Yeah, it is. It it's is. very get, pricey. It is. Otherwise, yeah, alcohol and, and, and you know beer and wine and everything, actually everything just about in Australia yeah. is is quite pricey. And but yeah, you get looked after at the bar with better prices than what you might normally have at a at a bar or, or restaurant. So uh, that's a really good tip uh, for uh, for yeah to spend a, a bit of a day in the sun and. Uh, a bit, bit of something different which you might not have experienced before. Yeah. So listeners, if you're in Australia, <laughs> go at least one day to bear footballs. Exactly. It's a definitely a must do and a must see. I never have been so far in Australia, but you told me so much about it. <laughs> and I definitely have to confirm that it sounds amazing. And I will, if I'm there, I will definitely try to. Yeah, def definitely. You have to, have to yeah. have a look. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> and... Uh, Anyway, listeners, if you are, want to have some pictures about it, Matt's described it really well, but we have some pictures on our YouTube channel. So if you're listening on Spot Spotify or any other listening app, check out our YouTube channel. There you can see some pictures, then you get some better overview about bear footballs, what it is exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there's one other special sport which uh -huh. I want to speak about, the Australian footballs. Yeah, that's right. Uh, like I said, it was, it's sort of a bit of a mix of uh, a bunch of different sports. And although it's really confusing to fully understand, it's, it's sort of great to watch. Um, it's, it's sort of uh, played all around this, the, the country and we get up to sort of a thousand people watching in, in a game at once. So it's, it can be a really good atmosphere if you're in the MCG, which is the Melbourne Cricket Ground. It's mm -hmm. the biggest uh, venue we have uh, for boarding venue. Um, With nearly 100,000 yeah, yeah, people, yeah. right? Yeah, and uh, the big bands will sell, you know, sell almost as many uh, tickets as well. So a lot of uh, other other sort of uh, music, you know, music. If you're in Melbourne, uh, you get the opportunity. Uh, it's a winter game where we are actually. Uh, but yeah, if you get the opportunity to watch a game of footy, which is Australian rules football, uh, please do that and uh, pick a one with a, a yeah with a, an ex expected to be a big crowd and, and the the energy in the stadium is just uh, incomparable, I guess. I guess um, the stadiums here are uh, built for, you know, for football. Um, you get, you're lucky to get sort of, I don't know, I guess the new stadium in Linz is now, uh, has the capacity for around uh, 20, just over 20,000. So, like yeah, and uh, you know, if you, you can, you um, 100,000 is five times the sort of capacity. So yeah. it, the atmosphere is un uh, unbelievable. Um, and if you get to watch, if you get a chance to watch my Tigers, then, <laughs> then do that as well, I've got. Uh, that's the background of your yeah, tattoo. Ah, I see. We won the, the the grand final in 2017, the first time for a long time, and I so that you got a tiger yeah, yeah. tattoo on your I arm. To I tiger to celebrate that. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> makes sense. Uh, yeah, makes but sense. does people get the rules also if you don't know them? No. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> not really. <laughs> it's just experience, even if you don't know the rules. Just go there, yeah, check yeah, it out, yeah, yeah. and have fun one day yeah absolutely the cool enjoy thing. the atmosphere and yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's still fun to watch so the cool thing is you know there's a lot of action so there's not much um uh you know there's a lot of action you might not understand what's happening but it's still fun to watch so uh yeah definitely a recommend for if you if you get to uh, watch a football match okay yeah it's really really fun okay australian football mm -hmm. all to do so pair footballs australian football yeah, definitely. Yeah, two yeah. things activities yeah, two. which we have to do when we are in australia exactly yeah. there's actually one fun fact about australia because we are already so deep into the sport mm -hmm. you have even three days for sport yeah. activities <laughs> that's right? right that's right yeah. yeah where austria has a lot of uh religious sort of holidays we have a lot of um sporting 
uh, sport like sport related holidays. So Australian Rules Football Grand Final, the Footy Grand Final, that's a pretty new one. Uh, one we've had for ages is the the one in Victoria about centered around the horse racing. So uh, there's a race at Flemington which will. Uh, uh, get a, get a holiday for as well. So Melbourne yeah. Cup Day. We should bring that to Europe for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I sure. think <laughs> it's a great idea. Have a free too, day yeah. for a sport event. Oh, a free like, day is always good, but for a sport event even yeah. better. Of course, we are yeah. fanatic for ski World Cup. So yeah. Yeah. if there is the Strife, for example, yeah, exactly, yeah, in yeah. Kitzbühel, a big downhill race, yes. which we are yeah. big fans of it. I'm for that for sure. I think we can lobby for that one, and maybe we have some luck yeah. turning that one into a, a public holiday. <laughs> we should really. <laughs> Push that so this idea. <laughs> <Right> before that. <laughs> Great. Anyway, guys, if you want to know more about the Streif, look up the movie One Ride of a Hell. Great movie, even if it's totally other company. But I, this time I need to make some uh, advertisement for them. It, they, it's worth it to watch it. Well, Matt, thanks a lot for the input about the activities. So if we are there, it's going to be a active holiday, yes, active yeah. trip for sure. But so. what are activities and places to see if we are there? Yeah, there's a, of course a, a few classics that some will be aware of. For example, uh, we've got the, the Great Ocean Road in, in Victoria. That's a, that's a, a beautiful coastal um, windy, winding road uh, in the south of the state. Yeah, beautiful spot. I've, I've, took me ages to do it but uh, I finally got around to doing it a couple of years ago and it's it's a real really nice spot uh, plenty of beautiful spots to s overnight uh, to stay overnight on the way or, or stay for a, for a coffee or a brunch yeah or maybe even uh, stop at the beach and have a bit of a swim as you go and then the end of the road it sort of turns into a bit of a more foresty sort of area which is also really nice so you get a bit of both worlds there and um, right at the start of the Great Ocean Road is a, is a really cool sort of uh, town with a bit, a bit of a surfy vibe. Uh, that's Torquay. Um, that's a place I love to go back to and uh, yeah, whether you're into surfing or not, it's a great place to, to visit. Uh, and you can watch people sort of surfing the reef or there's a few more, you know, beginner friendly uh, surfing areas and schools in Torquay. So really hot tip uh, for a place to go, especially if you're keen to have a try your hand at surfing and yeah also to sort of um, I mean there's just like there are in Melbourne there's there's or everywhere there's sort of uh, really nice cafes and stuff like that so where you can get a good brunch just too so um, yeah really cool cool sort of area um, which I can recommend as well and that's where the that's where the start of the ocean road great the ocean road yeah yeah, yeah 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 well there's a there's a couple of classics that, that probably a lot of people will be aware of like the great barrier reef uh you mentioned when we were talking before and uh that's a that's a really nice spot if you're into snorkeling and diving and uh, a lot of long sort of white sandy beaches what you sort of picture in your mind maybe when you think of australia is sort of those uh beaches around the sundays and, and northern part of australia um yeah airs rock is another another classic uh i've yeah, never been myself but uh but yeah, it's a, a sort of a sacred uh, sort of site for the indigenous Australians uh, and well worth a look if you can get a chance to do that as well. It's just a bit off, a bit out of the way because it's sort of quite central mm -hmm. in the country. I guess when you, we talked a bit about the Great um, Ocean Road and if you look at the other side of the, uh, the coast, so the other side of Melbourne, the east, east coast, um, there's a, a peninsula there which is a bit, probably a bit, um, oh, I guess, uh, less well known uh, under, uh, under the tourists. and. But a really nice spot. Um, uh, it's got a couple of sort of really nice, uh, yeah, also sort of uh, towns with a bit of a surfing vibe. And you can get the ferry also from sort of one point of the coast to another. So it's a really uh, good opportunity if you are in the Geelong area uh, and Torquay area to sort of take the ferry over and get a look at the other side of the side of the yeah the coast as well. So we already get into it to the Great Ocean <laughs> Road. So it's already if you are one month in. Australia or something that's perfect trip right I yeah, heard out of yeah. you your words that it's good to go to the east coast right down there and getting to peninsula and starting at Melbourne and going down right yeah certainly so right? yeah absolutely uh, a good trek might be you know you might start in uh, in Melbourne uh, if you fly in to there and spend a few days there having a look around at least and and then you might uh, yeah go sort of uh, there's a pretty popular uh, um, suburb of, of Melbourne which is called St Kilda mm -hmm. uh, yeah and that's really worth a look too got a really cool cool sort of vibe uh, about that town 
Um, they're probably better places to swim, but it's a really nice uh, sort of uh, beach if you, if you want to have a look at that. And if you go further along, you'll, you'll come eventually to the tip of that bay. Um, and that's where you can catch, uh, that's where you've got really nice yeah, surf areas uh, on the one hand, on the one side. And you know, on the bay area, you've got the, the opportunity, uh, really nice town for one, but for another, you've got the opportunity to take the ferry over uh, straight across the bay to that start of the Great Ocean Road. So you can link that up nicely and then you might end up, yeah, if you take the whole Great Ocean Road, you're, so, you're not that far away from Adelaide. If, if you, you make it to Adelaide then and round the trip out with Adelaide, um, it might be a good sort of little round, yeah. Can I, re I can recommend that one. And, and then from there you can sort of fly to, to the next destination you might want to check out, um, you know, Sydney or, or, or Brisbane while you're there. Sure, uh, yeah. Sydney, beautiful beautiful city and can even do a climb on the uh, on the Harbour Bridge if you're not too scared of heights. <laughs> so a lot of cool stuff to do there too and, and Brisbane's no different so really cool sort of and beautiful city too with plenty of things to do. Nice, so I'm yeah. already into yeah. it. <laughs> I already matched myself in Australia but we also have to mention that you need a visa there, right? That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, not the easiest place to, to access uh, from that point of view. Uh, uh, anyone traveling there can, can pretty easily get a, a, a traveling uh, visa. Um, it's usually valid a, a three months or so. And yeah, work and travel is the fame name here, right? Yeah, that's another alternative. That's uh, If you want to stay a little longer, that's probably valid sort of up to a year, I think, and gives you the opportunity to, like the name suggests, work and travel. Yeah. Um, only only downside is for Austrians that they're, they're not eligible uh, for that visa. So that's an arrangement we have with a lot of other countries, but uh, Austrian, Austria's uh, unfortunately not not one of them. Yeah, we have a close name, but not a close relationship to, to each other. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, yeah we've had to find that a, a few times the hard way. But yeah, that's in yeah, that's a real shame. Yeah, because it's otherwise a great opportunity. A lot of Germans will um uh, will come to Australia. It's a popular sort of popular thing to do among the Germans uh, travelers to to come and, and work. They can often extend it even I think as well. So uh, especially for young people, because I made yeah, my research yeah. in advance and mm -hmm. it said that. The most tourists are in the age between 20 and 30 years. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. I think the people who do the working travel get that visa. I think it's available for people within a certain age bracket too. Yeah. Or even if not, that's certainly the yeah the, the sort of typical age range uh, in, in any case, yeah. And another way is that you get sponsored, right? Yeah, yeah. So even if for, for Austrians, for example, if you can't get access to that working travel visa, there is an option. So uh, if you want to stay a little longer, you can get uh, sponsored by um, employer. So um, there, are, there are many areas uh, in Australia in which uh, the industries really need um, so workers, um, you can get a foot in the door that way as well. So if you, you can organize perhaps a, 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 an, a, a work before you even leave, and that way you can travel in on a completely different visa, uh, which will still allow you to, to work. And you know, of course you uh, can use all your spare time to travel as well on holidays too. So uh, otherwise there's, um, there's a few sort of uh, uh, occupations or, or industries where there's a really high demand for um, people f yeah within with certain qualifications uh, that'd be also worth a look if uh, you're planning to go to Australia before you go there sure, they yeah. sort of uh, they might even help you sort of move over so that's that's how motivated they are to get to get people yeah but anyway it needs some process like yes, you need yeah. some time if you want to get a visa to Australia and want to stay there longer at least if you want to stay longer Certainly, yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. as we said already in advance to each other if you want to go to Australia, take your time, take some preparation, look up at the websites. European Union helps you a lot. Also on the Australian government page, you yeah. get a lot of tips how to get your visa and everything. So Absolutely. listeners, just check that out. European Union, the Australian government pages, and there you get all the tips what you need if you want to go there. Yeah, and there's right. one other funny thing, which uh -huh. because we have a lot of listeners from the UK and even Australia is part of the Commonwealth, yeah. even people from the UK need a visa. Which I was yeah, really yeah, I was surprised when you said it as well. I wasn't sure if that was the case, but um, yeah, like you confirmed, it's, it's the case. We do have really strict border, uh, you know, policies and uh, it's, it's a, a bit of a hard uh, land to travel to for an extended period of time. So really strict and like you said, even, even uh, our fellow countries uh, or the countrymen from the, from the Commonwealth countries aren't really, you know, it's made complicated for them too. So. Yeah. 
but it's strict but totally worth it as yeah, yeah, as you yeah. already gave us some input what you do there and what you see so for yeah. sure absolutely yeah. certainly worth a look and like i said for tourists it's quite simple um yeah, yeah it's yeah make sure like you said to leave enough time to to get that um for sure approved but and yeah. if you're going to australia yeah. you should bring also some warm clothes with you yeah that's right the that's the yeah that's a bit of a, a bit counterintuitive but um that's certainly the feedback i've had from a lot of people who've uh, you know from europe who have traveled to australia particularly you know the more the further south you go the the colder it gets uh sort of the exact you know reverse of, of the northern hemisphere but uh yeah yeah uh it's a classic for for an austrian or, or you know anyone traveling from uh, from europe to think no think only about packing uh you know summer clothes so but it gets quite cold uh, overnight in um in victoria and 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 even uh even sydney in, in in the winter and so you really need to be packing uh some warmer clothes as well uh which is not the first thing you think of but uh you learn the lesson pretty quickly once you're sitting in a cold sort of uh cold house that's got no heating whatsoever mm -hmm. and you're, you're sort of shivering away um yeah, wishing wishing you might have packed a jumper for sure it's yeah. a different way of building houses so it's exactly, yeah, inside yeah. in the night often cold so that's right that's right yeah, yeah. I've, I've been yeah i've been in houses where I've had to put, you know, three or four layers on and, and two blankets over the top. So it can get really chilly, uh, can really surprise you. And Especially in winter times. Yeah, yeah, mostly in winter. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. In summer, it never gets too, too cold overnight. Um, but even on the fringe seasons, you know, you, you can get the odd cold day. And actually, Melbourne's a classic example. It's, it's sort of the city uh, known for having four seasons in a day. And so it can can be that you go out and it's like today. Uh, could be that two hours later it's it's a thunderstorm and you and you're freezing cold and in, in, in the rain and yeah. uh, and then two two hours later the, the sun's popped back out again and well, you got a rainbow and also similarity to Austria. That's yeah yes that's yeah. true yeah yeah. Sure, yeah anyway if you're already here on the similarities between mm. Austria and Australians well. Can you compare Austrians and Australians a bit? Is there, or Europeans in general and Australians? Yeah, yeah sure. I mean, a few things uh, popped to my head like, that I've experienced over the time. And uh, one thing I sort of, uh, which was sort of comforting for me in uh, moving to, to Europe and or being in Europe the first time with, or Austria specifically, is, is that the, the uh, humour is sort of quite similar. So uh, I guess in Australia, uh, a lot of humour comes from the way you might Mm -hmm. articulate things and the way you might express yourself and I find that with the different dialects in, in Austria it's kind of similar you can you can really get a lot of humor out of the way you might say yeah. something rather than you know act uh, yeah definitely pronouncing words that can change a lot yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Yeah, which I find uh, really fu funny to play with um, happy to hear that because person. I'm uh, from the west of Austria and we have a really strong dialect yeah, so exactly, I yeah. totally get what you mean that's, that's right. right yeah the famous yeah <laughs> Tyrolean dialect uh, which I'm, you know, slowly understanding better and better. But uh, it's it's uh, it, that's one thing that's really interesting. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's really it's one thing that's really uh, different in Australia. So the the language is pretty homogenous. So you you kind of go from you might go from one end to the complete other end of Australia, and you you understand it's, it's the language isn't that much different. You can go you can you can go to uh, when you're in in Austria, you might go uh, over the state border, which might be you know. A, yeah, it might be a 45 minute drive or something like that and you, you, you're struggling to understand <laughs> you know what's being said uh, even even the Austrians struggle uh, communicating at, at times so uh, yeah really funny it's sort of of course the language uh, in Austria is German but it's it's quite a different German to what you yeah, what, what you would get but also your English is different so, it is it is yeah, yeah. it really takes some getting used to and uh, also speak quite differently if I'm in a um, if I'm in a group with sort of you know, a bunch of Australians. It might be tough yeah. to tough to follow as well. Just like just like yourself with a bunch mm. of um, uh, yeah, it's a to each yeah, other. We speak thing, totally yeah, different. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, totally different. Yeah. The English can be a bit different than their school English. Yeah, it's certainly different yeah. to what they might have learnt. So uh, it takes some getting used to. It takes a long time to get used to even. Um, but hopefully, you know, the, the Australians will speak and take, take, um, be a bit you know cautious with the wording they use and try mm. to make it. Yeah, understandable, <laughs> because yeah. it can be pretty wild. Happy to hear that we have the same humor. Yeah, yeah, Another absolutely. point yeah, that yeah. we definitely should go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, absolutely. Yeah. 
And I always ask my guests about security and yes. is it dangerous in Australia? Well, we all know it's a very health country. There's a health economic there and you're quite rich, right? Mm. So probably it's quite safe too. Or what do you think? Yeah, yeah certainly. So the healthcare system is really good. Anything that happens to you uh, emergency wise, you're really well covered and in the best hands really. Um, uh, so the, the, the first care is, is yeah, as good as anywhere in the world. Um, uh, yeah, a lot of people make a big fuss about the dangerous animals in, in Australia, sharks, but right? yeah, yeah, sharks and crocodiles in the north, and we've got sn snakes and spiders and you know, anything, that's, anything that's poisonous we sort of have, but uh, it's pretty uh, rare that something happens. In fact, um, uh, yeah, as a tourist, I think you'd be pretty unlucky to, to even come across a shark, let alone to be attacked by one. So pretty safe. Um, what I would recommend is that you sort of, it's more the sea in general that can be uh, less, than the, less so than the sharks. The, the power of the sea is, can surprise you a little bit as someone who's not used to it. So um, you have a big respect for the power of the ocean and, and you can uh, get pretty forcefully and quickly dragged out in a rip, for example, or a current which you don't, when you don't know what to look for, or you choose the wrong areas to swim. So I would recommend <clears throat> uh, swimming at a beach that has flags that's patrolled. So you've got people watching, really watching for, for people who need help. Uh, and yeah, swim between the, the marked area and you, you know, you're pretty good. Um, if you get into trouble, hold, hold your hand up high and, and um, usually you're sort of in really good hands again there and, and nothing will really happen. Uh, but yeah, treat, treat the ocean with respect in any case. And same goes with the surf beaches. You can get pummeled by wave and you sort of don't know which, which way is up and which way is down. And uh, The so-called washing machine. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's, that could be pretty daunting as well if you experience that. Uh, and then sometimes it can be that you come up and then the next one topples you yeah, yeah. and keeps you under for another seven seconds or something like that. So yeah, uh, always a bit of respect and caution. But, um, you know, yeah, um, with a reasonable amount of sense, um, yeah, nothing, nothing will happen. And even if you do get, uh, I mean, I've seen my fair share of snakes and, and spiders and things like that. But it's, it's. Uh, I don't know of anyone who's really. Uh, I think it's been a long, long time since somebody's, uh, you know, died from 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 something like that. So yeah, it's very it's, rare. It's really rare. Even yeah, yeah. there's a chance to see a shark for yeah. sure. Yeah, yes, but yeah, yeah. to yeah. get attacked is quite rare. Right? Yeah, yeah. Any, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. yeah if you if you're in the ocean. If you're constantly in the ocean, you're bound to see a shark at some time or another. But uh, so most of the surfers I know have seen sharks, but you know that uh, the, none of them have been attacked. And, and while it does happen, it's yeah, it's no more risky than sort of anywhere else. So yeah, yeah, happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. Yeah, so um, yeah, well, we had already many things. So to sum it up, we spoke about Melbourne and the big East Coast road. Um, well, we speak about Sid we spoke a bit about Sydney, mm -hmm. the most beautiful city you said. Mm -hmm. um, well, we have still one city left, right? Is Geelong, which is uh, yeah, sort of also along that that coast. Um, yeah, really cool, cool sort of city with a cool character as well. And um, yeah, and you told me that once it's area. a bit a secret spot, right? Yeah, not everyone yeah, knows it. So yeah, that, that's right. It's becoming uh, sort of more and more popular with uh, not not just among tourists, but among uh, among the Australians as well, who yeah. maybe um, are looking to you know uh, looking for a bit of a move. Uh, they want to be in the city, but not you know a bit more of a lifestyle around it as well. So if uh, that's a, that's a really cool tip. If if you're staying longer somewhere, uh, is 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 maybe a really cool thing to check out. And they they have a really um, <laughs> uh, yeah to, back on footy again. They have a really um, uh, sort of. Uh, they have a team Geelong in the in the you know in the national league, uh, pretty successful and got a great supporter base. So if you get the get the chance to watch a home a home match uh, at Geelong, that's also a really cool thing to check out while you're there. Yeah. Too, so. so we can sum it up as a local tip. Yeah, like certainly. Yeah. Many locals and see the local life go to Geelong, and it's even on the road of the East Coast. Yeah, absolutely. It's not not yeah. far from Torquay, the surf, you know, the surf sort of uh, hotspot. So, yeah, so really worth a look if you're down there yeah. too. Yeah, really cool Amazing. place. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. We have already so many yeah. things and time is running out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but in the end, I often ask my guests about words in their own language. Well, 
obviously we speak already English yeah, yeah. and <laughs> your main language is English. That's right. But anyway, you have some special words in your language, right? Yeah. Is there see, something yeah. what you can directly comes, uh, comes to your mind if you think about Australian English and Australian slang? Yeah, certainly. So uh, I have a book about this thick of, of Australian slang. So there, there's a lot, but uh, a classic one you might use every day would be like to say g'day mate, which would be like a just a, a standard greeting, uh, g'day mate. And uh, so that one's used a lot and a good one to be aware of. Um, one that might sort of, even if you're, if you're talking to an Australian, that might sort of slip out <laughs> accidentally and uh, without them thinking too much about it. So that's one to be aware of. Uh, if, if you're in doubt in, in Australian slang, it's good to put a uh, Y on the end of everything. So every every uh, every word can be sort of shortened or with a Y. Uh, I guess if you're uh, talking about names, you, you got Jimmy, Johnny, uh, Jerry. Um, they're all sort of short forms from names, and you, but that that extends not just to names, but for everything really. Uh, yeah, so awesome. yeah. yeah, be aware of the, the, the ending and if in doubt, whack a Y on the end of everything you say, so, and then you can't go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> good to know, good to know. <laughs> well, definitely a big help if we are there. Exactly. Well, thanks a lot, Matt. Is there anything what you want to add, which we didn't spoke about, but mm. you want to add to your podcast? Yes, there sure is. Um, I think I've talked a lot about my, uh, you know, uh, I'm a pa passionate man about Victoria, my home state, but, uh, what I actually recommend people do, um, if they've got, uh, say, three or four weeks to explore Australia, um, I actually recommend they, they have a look at the, the East Coast. Um, and that, that wraps all, I, I consider the, you know, the Victoria, where, where the border of Victoria is also to be that highly, highly populated coastline. Um, if you pick sort of two towns that are uh, like two bigger cities that are uh, on top of each other on the map, with one or two between. So for example, you might want to take off, uh, you might want to look at uh, in the north, so Brisbane to to, to Sydney or, or Brisbane to, to Melbourne or Sydney to Melbourne, or you might look at Sydney to, to, to Adelaide. Any two sort of bigger cities that link up, uh, but to try and bite off the in, entire um, East Coast is too much for a shorter time like that. You're much better to block off uh, a smaller section mm -hmm. um, and work your way you know, um, work your way at a slower pace uh, between those two points. You might fly out from, uh, you might fly into Brisbane and fly away from Melbourne, something like that, um, and or, or even Sydney, uh, which would be a smaller pace. Uh, take your time to explore. Otherwise, you're spending your whole time uh, on a bus, or you're or you're spending a whole time flying around, and it's really not much of a holiday. So, um, yeah, my tip would be to bite off a small piece and explore that a bit more thoroughly and slowly. Uh, and then maybe the next time you come, uh, take the next piece of coast. You, you could do the same thing though, not just the east coast, the, in the north uh, where Darwin is, and, and also um, uh, Perth from Perth uh, down the south, you know, along that uh, piece of coast is beautiful as well. So, um, yeah, but uh, the overarching theme should be, if you ask me, um, uh, choose a small portion of coast and take your time to explore it. Uh, at your own pace and uh, and really get a feel for the area yeah. and you'll spend a lot less a lot more time uh, experiencing things and a lot less time uh, sitting on a bus step by step yeah. theory yes yeah, yeah. Step for sure yeah, nice. recommend eh? yeah good recommendation so, to the end yeah. great end yeah good good so from Austrian to Australian, mm -hmm. thanks a lot that you have been here. Yeah. And well, there was another fun fact about you and your family. How do you call your kids? Because ah, of okay. the name yeah. similarities. <laughs> yeah, like you said, Austria and Australia always gets mixed up. And uh, uh, yeah, my kids are dual citizens and I call them Austria aliens. <laughs> it's a mouthful to try and get your, get your lips around, but uh, yeah, Austria aliens is, is, is sort of what we, yeah, <laughs> what we sort of yeah, call ourselves. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good exactly, yeah, yeah, it's a good word. Like good luck it. pronouncing it, but yeah. yeah, if you can, it's a good one. <laughs> yeah, but thanks a lot again. It yeah, was a pleasure. pleasure. And I'm yeah. actually happy that you have the same problems with the word changes between Austria and Australian, that you also have these complications when you tell someone where you're from. Yeah, yeah absolutely. My wife uh, had, had, a, had a shirt, actually, uh, which has uh, written on it as a, one of the sort of typical sort of 
uh, road signs from Australia and uh, no kangaroos in, in Austria. Austria. Yeah, yeah, so that, uh, that's how much it, it really does get mixed up. They have to make shirts for it too. <laughs> yeah. For sure, yeah. Well, what a hand, and it was really funny to speak with you. Yeah. Thanks for all the tips. Yeah. And I definitely hope that our listeners try your tips and please let us know if you have been in Australia and tell us how it was, right? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to hear back from anyone who's taken on my advice or, or yeah, or, or had their own sort of ideas on what might be a good trip for, uh, for a short trip in Australia. Yeah, I'd be really, really keen to know how you went. So, yeah, thank you. Thank Thanks, you. mate. Thanks coming. Thank you. Hey, it was Thanks, really man. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. No worries. Pleasure. It was great. And I'm thank now you. looking forward to jump into the river. Ah, uh, okay. the lake, <laughs> yeah. to the lake, to be sure. That'll be nice. By the way, big shout out for Regina and Stefan that we are, have been the chance, have the chance to make this podcast here. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, Regina. Awesome. Come here and say a hello to our listeners. <laughs> And also Stefan is in the back. Hello, Hello everyone. <laughs> Stefan, hey, you're hey, the yes. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Thanks for listening and Thanks see you listening. next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> I forgot my sunglasses and I will take them in uh, one second. Course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now I can see you clear. One, two, three. Woo! <laughs>